Today's guest is Dane Miller, ultra badass. You gotta love when you have ultra badasses on the podcast. This man knows his shit, all right? If you are trying to get faster, stronger, generally perform better in whatever sport you are playing, this guy knows how to get it done. Many of you guys are gonna remember the podcast that we've done with Knees Over Toes Guy. This is another classic like that. And by the end of this, you will have an insane amount of exercises to check out and do day by day in order to crush everything that you are doing in your life. Leave us a review on iTunes or Spotify and check out our Rumble and enjoy this podcast. Peace. The way of Will John. All right, Dane, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Life is good. Life is good. We have uh, a lot to get into. Obviously, I think the goal for this podcast will be for us to obviously give love to our footballers, but in general, also to the people who just want to train to get the best performance out of their body. Uh, that's where I'm trying to, to go. So with that, give us a little bit of a, a background of you and how you got into this. Okay, so I was a shot putter, uh, American football player and wrestler at growing up. I, you know, I played soccer football until I was 13. Actually, my dad would not let us play contact football until I was in seventh grade. Um, and then, you know, long story short, basically he's like, look, you either wrestle and play football or you swim. Cause I, I grew up swimming as well. You swim and you play soccer. And I've, I'm a, an aggressive individual and basically at that, especially as I'm hitting puberty and stuff and, and I'm American, it's like, ah, I got to play football and wrestle. <laughs> um, but then as I aged, I got very good at, as a shot putter, which is in track and field. Uh, I went to Penn State, you know, uh, so it's a Big Ten school for for throwing. And then I ended up training with a, an Olympic champion named Anatoly Bunderchuk. And while I was doing that, I started to get contacted by professional throwers, discus throwers, shot putters on what we were doing with Dr. B. And at this time, I, I, had a, I always had a very good uh, understanding or a very big interest also from my dad of sports performance. And so you know, I, I was into bodybuilding, I was into powerlifting, I was into weightlifting and the sports performance world was like very young. So this would have been like 2004 to like 2008 that time. Uh, and I, I decided that when I was training with Dr. B and all these people were messaging me and e emailing me, I was like, you know what, I'm going to try and move home. And we always trained in my parents' garage. Um, so I moved home after I li so I lived in Canada, uh, for a little more around a year, I moved home and I started my gym and we started working with wrestlers and then we started working with a lot of football players and throwers. And it was just sort of like, I had a really big in with actually a lot of swimmers and then it just catapulted where everybody wanted to come. And I would say specific to soccer, my best personal work with a, with a soccer player it was a guy named Christian Slode. He played at, at Penn State and he was all Big Ten, um, the leading scorer for like two years there. So that was like our, our biggest dive into soccer specific training. Um, yeah. And that's like the, the long and short of it. Really. Got you. Yeah. And so with all that, and it's always good to talk to people who are talking to players from all sports that are achieving a whole lot. It's crazy how many similarities there are between so many sports when you wouldn't think that, right? You know, I mean, soccer involves a whole hell of a lot of jumping, running, this, that, speed, this, you know. And uh, a lot of the guys, they you can't train exactly the same for a sport, but the similarities within, you need to be quick, you need to be strong. Usually it needs to be happen after, you know, one, two seconds, right? It's very rare that you have like a, you need a bodybuilding body to, you know, and, and your, your training is so different. And so with that, I want to get into just a general, a general overview of if soccer is a good, it's a good starting point, right? Because there's so many different types of, of things that need to, need to happen. But within sports performance, there are probably a few, let's start with the off, no weights, no nothing. What are the things that you're seeing from the guys that are able to achieve top level stuff? What are they doing? Body weight workouts? Are they working on their cores? Do they work on speed and agility? What what puts what are they putting and packing together well that makes them good without going in the gym before we get into what they no should be doing? No gym work specific. 
Well, if I, I'm saying there's stuff outside, I know, but you know, uh, I think I, dude, I think it's all skill based to their sports. I think that there's so much work. Like if I look at a, a discus thrower versus let's say a weightlifter versus a football player, an American football player versus a swimmer, it's like super, super specific. And even wrestling, it's always going to be very skill specific. So it's like, if they can practice, you know, in, in watching your channel, right? It's like if they can practice the skill-based aspect of soccer, like how how well can they handle a ball? How well can they handle a ball at very high speeds? How well can they decelerate with that ball? That's all skill work that's going to be done out on the field, and that can also improve their speed with the ball. That can also improve their deceleration, their ability to cut, their ability to set their opponents up uh, then to then be manipulated. And I think that that's always been – the biggest factor for me when I'm looking at, you know, the, uh, you know, Pan Am game, Pan Am games champ that I've worked with in swimming, uh, Pan Am champs and, and, and Olympic medalists that I've worked with that are on site here in throwing, uh, world medalists in wrestling, they've always had that, that skill mindset. It's always based off of their skill and i think it's so specific to their sport that's their passion the sport is their passion so they spend more time developing this analytical brain and it happens i i think it a lot oftentimes especially now with the internet uh or with social and and youtube it's happening way earlier with kids kids find that passion when they're 12 13 14 years old for these sports and they just get because they can watch it on their phone and 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 screen record things and and go back and forth it's so I think I think to answer it, it's like it's dependent upon, you know, soccer is, or uh, football is more uh, locomotive. So they're going to be doing more more sprints and and more footwork specific stuff. Whereas wrestling, it's going to be like I have kids that are out in their backyard doing stance and motion and taking shots and visualizing, you know, hitting a, a takedown and winning the world title the same way that an American kid grows up thinking that they're going to get hit a home run in the bottom of the ninth and and win the world series like and they're visualizing that while they're playing wiffle ball or or, or hitting a ball off a tee so i think it's it's all very specific the the best of the best have that that knack that passion for the skill and the technique early that's so true that's so true especially on the repetition side i mean it's it's insane how much time i spent you know i was on us at the time when i was growing up didn't have a u14 national team i was on the very first u14 national team and the amount of time i spent juggling shooting backyard uh in my basement in the kitchen all this stuff the repetitions that they that i think it goes it doesn't get noticed until you start seeing the guys that have success and you start to see how obsessed they are about bending the ball just one way 500 times, right? Or like you said, a takedown, this analyzing every single aspect of this, visualizing exactly what it is. Uh, it's so true. But then let's take it into it because uh, you had a very successful video. Obviously, we'll link to this, this video and the title of it was Best Gym Exercises for Soccer. But with before even getting into like the amount of information that you packed into there, we need, it should be a college course, dude. Like I, like two minutes in, I was like, all right, notebook. <laughs> you That's know? cool. Like, yeah. uh, so from what you remember from that and from just, you know, your own experience at all, what could you give us? Do you, do you remember like, what are these best gym exercises for a soccer player and why? So I, the way I, I have my, my brain works, right. Is, is that, I like to look at first, um, it's funny cause, cause you, you had mentioned this, like, you know, it, let's just take total opposites, like a shot putter. So if you think about the, the two best shot putters in the world, one, one's named Brian Krauser, the other one's Joe Kovacs. These are guys that are the strongest, like generational talent, like Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kobe, like Ryan Krauser right now is probably in the sport better than what you would see like a Michael Jordan. And if you take, if you took Krauser right now, he's strong. He's super explosive. Dude can probably run like a four, nine 40 and he's three thirty. dude. He's huge. And he's, he's strong. Uh, can do like a standing broad, like 10 plus feet, just freak of nature so you but you see the size of him and then so what I would do is for me is then I go okay well let's look at soccer so we have these crazy disparities here but you still have to be fast you still have to be 
strong to a point, strong in the sense that you have to, you know, I, I think about uh, Ronaldo's super jump and when he landed, he had to be strong to, to handle that landing position. And so the difference on these two massive disparities is that you see Krauser or Kovacs. These are guys who will carry more body weight. Okay, so they might be, you know, like 20% body fat. Uh, Krauser might be a little bit less. Joe Kovacs is probably a little bit more. And they're doing more like hypertrophy work. So they will have more and more mass. Okay, so that's going to be the difference on the training over here. That's like the subsetting. So then on the soccer side, they can't have that mass because they're running a 10K every every game or, or close to a 10K at the elite level. So they can't have that mass, but they still have to have that strength. They still have to have that speed. And and the, and what we focus on, we call you know, it's it's called dynamic trunk control. So the ability to to hold their trunk upright. And if you know, I always say the easiest person to think about with trunk control is is Barry Sanders. If you're an American, you could see him just juking, and his his upper body would never move. It's all his footwork and his legs, and so. The biggest thing to then take out of, if we're making that comparison of the, the 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 football player versus the shot putter, is, you know, the best football players in the world need to be lighter. They need to be, but they still need to be explosive. So then we have to start working on uh, exercises that are going to help you be explosive and be strong. So then you can say, okay, well now we have to focus on, and I'm going to mine deeper and deeper and deeper. Now I have to focus on uh, relative strength. So that's like pound for pound strength. So if we can make them pound for pound more stronger, then they don't have to have as much uh, mass to be as strong. So then we have to train their nervous system. And then we, we go, okay, we can do plyometrics. We can do explosive, explosive exercises like a power clean or a power snatch. But most most people aren't exposed to that early on. So then we drop down and then we go, okay, instead of a power snatch or a power clean or clean or something like that, now we can do trap bar jumps or dumbbell snatches or jumps with dumbbells. And we start to get creative with these specific exercises. And then it's like, okay, these are the core aspects around being a football player. You've got to be fast. Uh, and all the skill stuff, the skill stuff isn't what we're working on. The skill stuff's what, what your channel's about. And I always say that to the coaches in wrestling or the coaches in swimming or the coaches in football is like, yo, if you see a problem with skill, that's not on me. That's on that's on you guys. Like I will make <laughs> right. them fast. I will make them uh, more explosive. And then looking at the football player now, it's like, okay, they're almost always going to be in a unilateral position. They're almost always going to be sprinting at high speeds then they slam on the brakes and they might jog a little bit and then they uh, sprint again so there has to be a lot of start start and stop work that's where we'll look at plyometric series but then also uh, hip girdle strengths and then I'm my immediate thing always and especially with with uh, football is going to be a single leg squat okay if we can get them to master a simple single leg squat and get to the point and I like to provide benchmarks on one of the f aspects that I got flack on that video was I provided some benchmark lifts and people were like, oh, Chris, Cristiano Ronaldo, he would never do those numbers. And it's like, oh, I'm not saying that he does those numbers, but if <laughs> I'm speaking to, you know, we have this term that we call the normal person player. If I have the normal person who isn't uh, overly gifted, you know, they're just, they're literally the normal kid. If I can get that normal Joe Schmo that comes into my gym just to these benchmarks, one, I can use those benchmarks to work towards with a clean or with a single leg squat, in this case with soccer, and that motivates them. And then we can build that baseline so that they can jump off of one leg. They can run and, and have skill work with a, a soccer ball or with a football. I'm trying to do my best of not saying the word soccer. <laughs> you can hit. No, no, you're good. It's okay. global audience there. Okay. The global okay. audience gives people shit. Gives Americans shit, but Americans don't really care. They're just like, all right, so it's football. Like, <laughs> okay, whatever okay. you say. <laughs> so yeah. so yeah. the other thought is like the, the the place that I do think that we can have a big impact uh, with football is, is something called a quiet eye. So the ability to run and not get disrupted uh, by feedback and, and be able to handle things. And that's where the trunk control comes into play. And that's where... Um, foot eye coordination comes into play. So I will try to train things like uh, high speed plyometrics, again, the single leg squats so that they're more stable with their trunk. Um, 
and then just get get creative with all with looking at specific muscles like the hamstrings, like the quads and like the glutes and what exercises, what compound movements can we use to develop them so that they're a better soccer player. And you've mentioned a lot of stuff that uh, definitely, I mean, I've done plenty of obviously over the course of a, a long career, I've had tons of different trainers with tons of different methods and they all still do share those commonalities. Kind of like you said, single leg squats, plyometrics, explosive movements. Uh, I got a question on, um, and I don't remember where I originally read this. It's been at least a decade uh, since I read this and kind of incorporated something like this. What I noticed, and actually I'll just ask it to you as if I would ask a, a trainer. When I deadlift, all right, in the past, 10 years ago, six, seven, eight years ago, I would deadlift um, taking the bar up, you know, into that, that stance and then going yep. down, touching and going back up again. Yep. What ended up happening for me not that it wasn't helpful. It definitely, it definitely was. Obviously, the deadlift is a tremendous exercise. Uh, but I would notice over the course of three weeks, four weeks of uh, doing maybe one, depending on the season, maybe once a week I can get in a deadlift or maybe maybe two if it's preseason, like uh, you know, one on Monday, one on Friday or something like mm -hmm. this, some sort of something. Uh, I would start to get stiff. Mm -hmm. Stiff and I would still stretch. I wouldn't stretch. I, I wasn't doing nowhere the amount of yoga and stretching that I do now. Yeah. Right. Yep. And uh, then I remember reading about some sprinters and uh, a coach that was working with them. And these, these, these sprinters are lifting massive amounts of weight, yet they obviously have to be nimble, quick. You know, they can't have that extra mass like we talked about. And so he had them doing deadlifts where they would, they, they would deadlift, they would pull it up, pull the, pull the bar up, and they would just drop it. Yeah. Right? There was science behind that, of which I can't remember now. No eccentric right? load. And all this. And so, okay, so yeah, you know exactly. I started doing that. Game changer for me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, game changer for me, because I'm lighter guy, I'm a quick guy, I have to have my speed. If I'm carrying extra weight, which is very rare, but if I'm carrying extra weight, muscle, right? Not fat. It's, it's going to change the way that I turn, move, that I can, you know, blow past a guy. Um, and so my question goes for understanding that, like, is that something, what, what do you think about that in general? And then if you could touch on the Olympic lifts and what that does for football just in general and how you would incorporate that. That's a, a, a great question. And I would just say, I, I need to clarify, like for me in the sports performance world, I'm the guy mm -hmm. who's like anti deadlift. Um, and oh, the reason, God, okay. Yeah. Tell yeah. So the, and, and, and it's easy. So, so, so power lifters are very easy to, to pester. They're like, it's literally like poking the bear. Um, and the funny thing is for me is like, since I stopped throwing deadlifts, probably my favorite exercise. So I've deadlifted over 700 pounds, but at the same time I've trained guys in the NFL and they've never touched a deadlift. I've got, I've gotten guys to the Olympics and that we've never done a deadlift a single time. And, and the reason being is I'm looking at transfer of training and I, and I look at, okay, if in, in your case, you, you, you mentioned, you know, you can only do, let's say you only train your legs once or twice a week, maximum in season, you might do, do it once a week. So I'm going to look at an exercise that I'm going to pick that's going to transfer to three or four qualities and the qualities for, you know, a specific sport, I, I identify ahead of time. And so for a sport like, like football, I'm going to say, okay, you have to be, um, is specific qualities is you have to be explosive, you have to run fast, and let's say you have to have very, very optimized trunk control. So if I look at that, well, you know, does deadlifting do that the best? Does that transfer to all these other qualities? It can get you really strong, but it doesn't necessarily help with your twitchiness. It doesn't necessarily help with uh, with your trunk control. It can to a point, but it's not the best. And if I if I would use, you know, using your, your uh, sprint discussion, you know, you look at a coach right now, Ralph Mann, he works with Noah Lyles, who's, who's top two best in the world. He's, you know, Olympic yeah. champ in the 100 and the 200. So if I look at Noah Lyles, you know, he's 165, 170 pounds. Okay, that's pretty similar to what we're going to see, you know, with most football players. They're not going to be much heavier than 80 kilos, right? Like 85 kilos, something like that. Tops, well, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, Noah Lyles can can power clean uh, 140 kilos. Okay, so he can power clean 140 kilos, which is really, really heavy. He's really fast. He catches it 
you know, and that forces him to have that trunk to brace and then he drops it. So there's no eccentric motion. It's a fast movement. And this is a thing in the realm of weightlifting. And, and this is another thing in sports performance. There's coaches that use weightlifting movements and there's coaches that don't. And there's like this huge divide. And I would say that it, for me, I'm like the guy who, who will say, you don't need them. You don't have to have them. But if I'm teaching you from day one, I'm going to teach you how to do it. Um, and so f- to go to go back to your discussion, I would look at movements that you move weight fast, you move heavy weight fast. Um, we would still be doing, we would do mobility before your training session. We would do mobility post training session. Um, and I think that's one big factor too. The last 10 years, the world of mobility has just exploded, which is what's pushing a lot of, you know, world records across multiple different sports. Yes, there's PEDs. I'm sure somebody's going to comment about that right now, but there's also just a huge advancement in, in mobility and recovery tactics. Um, but yeah, my, my, my response to, to your situation would be, it doesn't have the highest transfer of training. The eccentric portion of those lifts are going to be what 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 fatigue you and make you feel stiff uh and then if you if your hamstrings are stiff or you're a lot of times it's the hips here on a deadlift you you get a really really tight in your hips which is also why i like single leg squats because it's it's a little deeper range of motion and then both sides are getting hit from the front from the back to help mobilize that hip and to and to elicit a greater trunk control so i think there's there's better ways to strengthen the posterior chain specific to your sport, specific to soccer, then the deadlift would be mm-hmm. my short mm-hmm. answer. So what are those? Obviously, you mentioned power clean, but... I would say a single leg squat. So if I have my rear foot elevated, um, a rear foot, I almost wanted to demonstrate. If I have my rear foot elevated yeah. in my, my... Like on a plant board or a slant? The, well, like no, on, so I would have it like this. So I'd have like my back foot would be up like this. Oh, okay. Like around. the Bulgarian yeah. type yeah, of... Yeah. Sc- yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Um... I would even say like you could do that with a goblet or the dumbbell. You could do it with a bar on your back. Um, I I would even do something like single leg RDLs. That's a a, a weight that or that's a movement. Now that you're going to decrease the load because you're in a unilateral position, but it's still going to train your hamstrings. It's still going to train your lower back. You have to focus on your trunk so you're not falling all over the place. Uh, another super basic one would be, and this would be big for soccer would be. Like uh, we'll put our foot on a on a furniture slider and we'll do a Cossack squat. So that might look like like if I'm here, mm-hmm. I would go, I would come down like this uh-huh. and, then, and then go back and forth to help mobilize my right. hips and even improve my my ankle mobility. Um, I even think too to a point, something as simple as like pulling sleds backwards, pushing sleds. But honestly, the, a lot of that. Yeah, then the main one for me would be, I think you guys would see the biggest transfer if you just set up like a a leg day. uh, And I would set it up where we do a leg day where it might be like a power clean followed by some type of single leg squat with an ab exercise followed by, um, you know, Cossack squats or something. But but my favorite like hamstring based movement would be doing Nordics, Nordic hamstring curls and getting very, very good at them regularly, like really, really good. Because what happens is in that position in knee flexion, if you're thinking like, okay, uh, if we can train fast with a power clean, and then we would have another day where we would just do plyometrics, we call it athlete day. If we can train movements fast, so now we've got the cleans or some type of explosive movement like a trap bar jump or dumbbell jump or dumbbell snatch, something like that. And then we have that, athlete day those are the plyometric exercises where we might do like a single leg bounds or or jump lunges or single leg stair jumps i think that would be another fantastic one we have plyometric series another one that we call the jan jump series where it's like super unilateral side to side jumps okay we got that taken care of now the strength aspect we don't need to back squat 600 pounds as a as a as a soccer player you know that's where joe kovacs ryan krauser the shot put scenario i have painted earlier those guys need to do that because they need to power clean 450 well dude Mm -hmm. most football players only need to power clean you know 90 kilos 100 kilos max and that would probably even be pretty heavy 
So it's like, all right, well, let's do some single leg squat work uh, for the strength movement. And then on another day, we could possibly do some of the, that Nordic work to really target the hamstrings. And then you would get into the Cossacks uh, for, for more agility in the glutes um, and more targeting your adductors as well because of what happens when you're actually – when you're actually making contact with a ball. Um, and honestly, I think a lot of my stuff that we would set up to on our athlete day when we would do the plyometrics, I would try to incorporate at least one exercise that would that would be using a ball or a ball reaction in, in the plyometric series. So there might be like the ball's going here, you have to trap it by the time you get out of this. It bounces once and you have to do like a shuttle and trap it before it, it it bounces a second time um, just because I do think that it's, it's, it's like ice hockey. You know, you can train, you got, you can train specific characteristics with, without the stick or without the puck, but the sports with the stick and a puck. So you got to get specific <laughs> at a, at, at a right. point. And I think that's what I would do with, with soccer is like, there would be a point where we've got to do something with the ball because if we don't know how to be fast with the ball, like we're screwed and we've got to get to the point yeah. where we can run at like 90% of our top end speed. You know, if we measure our, our 100 meter sprint and we ran a 10 second hundred, which you wouldn't be a soccer player, you would be a, a world-class sprinter. But let's just say this <laughs> for math. If, if I'm running a 10 second sprint with no ball, that means that I would want to try and run like a 10, one or a 10, two with the ball, which, which sounds crazy, but it's trying to work towards that point. And that would be where that on that athlete day, I would try to get, unique with it it's really fascinating i think uh two things number one uh you you may be familiar with knees over toes guy we did a collab a, with him okay so you did a collab with him yeah. great because you guys you're the second uh person obviously to speak to with the uh love for the nordic right yeah yeah and uh Originally, we had spoken, now it might even be three years, right? So three years, we had, we'd spoken, we did a, a podcast, we did some so, you know, some stuff, and he sent me all his stuff. So he sent me the tip raise bar, he sent me uh, the slant board, uh, monkey foot, uh, this type of thing that you can, you, know, you can raise your foot up. I think, that's, I think that's it, right? But out of all those, great, you know, the, the tip raise, you can definitely see and feel the stability and stuff like this. And, but the Nordic, as you mentioned, and you said, the, like... I want everybody to also listen to the, what you add to that, like getting good at it. And the reason I say that is because all soccer players know that in preseason for like one day, we'll do, we'll do like Nordics. Like everybody will hold each other's yeah, yeah, yeah. ankles. Yeah. They'll do it. You won't see that shit ever again for the rest <laughs> until the next preseason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, that's not what you're saying. He said, get good at it. Right. And so, yeah. I think that needs to be said for training in general is like, I, I, I truly think that that's why I like having benchmarks. And it's like, if you, if you hold yourself accountable and say you single leg squat, the, the Bulgarian, I, I just don't like calling it Bulgarian because it's like a marketing ploy. Bulgarians never did single leg squats. <laughs> um, that's a like myth bust. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. I think that if you have these benchmarks and you said, okay, I'm going to do a power clean and I can get to 90 or hundred K. Um, you know, whatever's reasonable. And we, so what we do is we say, okay, this is world-class, this is elite, this is intermediate, and this is novice. And then you can see it as you're making that progress. You know, if I, if I would say, um, we, we would have a benchmark for the clean, we have a benchmark for a single leg squat, we have a benchmark for Nordics. And it's like, if, if you can do that and you can instill in the, in, in the athlete, like, look, you, you got to train two to three days a week the whole year you can't just say like i want to do one nordic no i want you you got to get to do 10 nordics and then when you can do 10 now i want you to pause at the start and come up and then it's it's like all of a sudden you're never having hamstring issues you're never having knee issues because you can slam on the brakes so well and i think that that's like one thing i would echo there is is also it's like yeah and it's like any fast athlete is it is it causation or correlation? Any fast athlete we've ever had, we've had, we've had running backs run four three three forties. Okay, Nick Singleton is like this. He's real. He's a starting running back right now at Penn State. Every single running back that we've ever had, every single soccer player, every single athlete, track athlete, right? They can do that's fast. That is can sprint really fast. They can do ten to twelve Nordics like. 
boom, boom. And it's like, is it causation? Is it correlation? I don't know, but I think it, the easiest thing to do is just get really good at them. <laughs> so true. It's so true. I mean, I noticed immediately. It was funny because we, I, I did that podcast a year had passed. We spoke again and I'm like, dude, you have no idea. Like I can't, because I hadn't measured it. I hadn't measured it. To be honest, it's one of those things where, yeah, it's clear. It's always great to be able to quantify your stuff. I don't need to. I did not need to. It's obvious. You can feel it when you run. You can feel the difference in the change in the direction. It's there. But I had done five, five sets of five once a week for basically like eight or nine months. That was almost it. That was it yeah, during season two. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it was to the point, like, for, at first, you know, I was kind of like, all right, like, you know, and then you start to see, like, well, I'm actually kind of getting better at it. And then I started to notice on the field, like, I got here quicker, yeah, you yeah. know, and then you start to, and then, you know, that, that compound, it, it's like that with everything in life, to be honest. I mean, if we want to even pu push it out, right, whatever you right. focus on and intently do consistently, generally will start to bubble and grow. But it's crazy what it does for you there. Uh I want to I want to get into something that's also You got to try a razor this, curl uh, by the way. Have you ever seen a razor curl? Never heard of it. Tell so me razor, about it. Tell a razor curl it. would be you're on Okay, so if I'm on like a Nordic, if I'm doing a Nordic like this, can you visualize like I'm starting here? Yeah, of course. So now I start with my torso like this and I go boom okay. out boom out boom oh, out and you okay. just like go back and forth. I'll send you some okay. I'll send you some videos of a razor curl cuz it's like it's just a slightly different version that I think you would even feel then, then it's like going to compound on top of the Nordic. It's, it's another direct hamstring and, and you almost feel it in your calf a little bit then too. Oh yeah. I mean, absolutely. Cause I'm, I'm looking for any of these things like that. One of the other fascinating things, right. That I found in learning about the Nordic is that, uh, there was that the long jumper, I believe who broke the record or got gold, I think at 36, 37. And then the, the guy in the NHL also who, I don't know if he was the MVP in the Stanley Cup, but he at least he tore it up the whole season, or maybe he was the leading goal scorer for his his team or the league. And uh, they were doing Nordics, and they were in their mid to late thirties. And it's like once again, it's another one of those things. It's like, well, these guys are super fast and super explosive, but they also happen to be really good at the Nordic, and they can do this perfectly. It's like probably you should you Just should do, do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so. But anyway, uh, going on to something that's different, it's a kind of like, a, let's say, the buzzword uh, for all guys within soccer. They want to know how to get a, a more powerful shot, right? That's always the thing. And obviously, it's more complex than saying guys will look at quads. They'll just look at their quads and they'll just go, you know, like this. One of the first things without having any like a background like yours, I first tell them to fix their technique, right? Uh, because they got these flimsy ankles and they're toe poking the ball or they're not connecting with the right spot. I'm like, if you want to first, before we even go there, let's fix your technique, right? So I'll tell them that. But I'm sure you've maybe run into, or even if you, in your head, because of the mechanics of shooting, you have some, you know, something that might help. Yeah, so I'm, if I would go, the first thing I would do would say, and I'm, I'm pulling this up because there was a paper. Okay, so if I go this... This is the, the research journal from October of 23. Um, and the first thing that I like to do that I think that we, we all get stuck where it's like, okay, well, I, there's research. Again, you, let's just stay with this shot put soccer comparison. There, there's this paper about shot putters, but I can't implement that because they're different. And I think, okay, so here's the first thing that I would do. All right, well... Let's just look at this. Post activation potentiation for Muay Thai kicking performance. Okay. Well, uh, you know, normally people would see that and they'd be like, uh, what is that going to do for me? I'm a soccer player. I'm a, I'm a, a kicker. And I'm going, what is that going to do for you? What happens when you're kicking? Like if I'm kicking, I'm planting, right? I plant my, my lead leg. So one, I have to slam on the brakes. So my ankle's got to be stable. I've got to be super mobile. And then, it, and then the other thing is we've got to be mobile through our hips so that our counter, 
I, I don't know what the 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 counter like for for baseball it would be like a, a counter movement or for a jump it would be you do a counter movement to load to to lengthen. So now I, I lengthen my my let's say I'm kicking right legged. I lengthen my right leg on the on the back on the back swing, just like a golf sure. ball wind up. Yeah, and yeah. then I come through. And if I can lengthen that a little bit more, I'm gonna get greater energy build up, and then I can use that more just like a, a hockey swing just like a golf swing just like a baseball and then if we can go and say okay so we've got to be stable in our ankles to slam on the brakes there so if we use that that lead leg that's planting that's got to be mobile so that we can achieve uh, a, let's say um yeah, so when we when we plant that that left leg, thinking through that visually, we got to slam that brake on. Our quad has to be strong. We've got to have co contractions in the hamstrings and the quads and that lead leg to hit that. We also have to slam on through the hip. We have to be, you know, we have we'll be behind the that lead leg a little bit behind the ball with our our torso. We take this backswing and then we come through. So we need to to lengthen that. That's where the the caustic squats as that we were just demonstrating. That's going to help you be more mobile in the hips. Plus, you can do things like hip 90-90 couch stretch. Those are things that you can do on the side. Uh, the the lead leg planting and slamming on the brakes, that would be, to me, I'm thinking through a slow eccentric single leg squat or single leg squat we call it unbroken where you get placed and you go one, two, three, four. That's going to help me create more tension and more co-contractions in my hip and in my knee for that for that plant leg but then if we're looking at in baseball it's called exit velocity okay so if we if we think about uh how fast we can we can hit a ball well if we study mike trout or vlad guerrero jr and you look at their their exit velocity when they they hit this counter movement here okay if they have a greater counter movement and then they initiate it in a certain way a certain sequence they hit harder okay they hit the ball harder so then the next thing that I would do is, okay, well, is there, I would go on PubMed and I would look for specific things to do as far as kicking a ball faster, right? Um, specific to football, American football or football. Then I say, okay, this just pops up. Post-activation potentiation for Muay Thai kicking performance. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, they take athletes and they go through and post-activation means they, they'll do an exercise uh, that will lead to more neural recruitment or more motor unit recruitment, okay, that, that with the same uh, muscles that are going to be used for kicking. So they'll do an exercise, and then in, in that acute setting, so in that very moment, you know, they'll rest about 30 to 40 seconds, and then they kick something, and then they see what happens. And so what you can do is, you know, and I've got to read this paper more, but this was as soon as you asked me that because – I literally, sure. this just came out. Uh, so I haven't gone through it in depth. But mm -hmm. what I would do is I would th think through exercise or other sports and what they do. And then I would look at it. Um, and the post activation, a, a similar thought process with post activation could be like if you do two back squats fast and then you rest 40 seconds and then you go test your vertical jump, you'll jump higher than if you didn't do those two back squats. That's, that's like very well founded. Now, you don't want to get more than like 80 to more than basically like 80% of your max. Cause you can have some neural fatigue from that. Um, but in this case with the, with the soccer instance, the single leg squats, the mobility in the ankle, um, focusing on trunk work. So, you know, even just doing like lunges with a plate over your head. And then when you, when you plant here, so I would do something where I'd have like this, I do a lunge and like pause. That's going to help me with my lead leg planting then we do the Cossack squats. We're doing couch stretch at home to lengthen that hip. But what is this couch stretch? I don't, I don't know this. Couch stretch would be like, if I'm here, it's hard to demonstrate here, but I would have this. My I see. I see where you, I see what you're in. Yeah. And I'm with like, your foot up on the couch. Yeah. All through here. You uh, feel like you're going to blow out your hip. <laughs> okay. So you could do that as like that mobility work at home in the morning and in the afternoon or morning and at night. But then to strengthen that. I would probably do, you could, so you could do something where you have a band tied to your foot and bring it through and hold the hip lock. So you're like here, you come through and hold there. Okay. I come here and the, there'd be a band around my foot. Um, we do a drop, drop a dumbbell, catch it, 
do a dumbbell snatch on a unilateral position, swing through, hold that position. Um, I'm trying to think through like right off the top of my head, like an actual, cause I, I look at it like you've got to figure out the mobility to improve in those joints. You got to find the strength movements to improve in those joints. And then you've got to go and then you find the sports specific action to improve that, that activity. And that's where I think like a, this study here would come into play. And that's where like, even like rotational work, I bet you there'd be a decent, a decent amount of research around like rotational medicine ball throw probably has a decent carryover um, because you have to have that, that trunk stability when you're rotating as well. So when you rotate from the foot, I'm just trying to think through like a, a very sports specific. It's hard for me to, to, I would have to be down in the gym. You've to, done no, nah, you've done already. I, I, the fact I've never actually seen anyone connect the dots like this, which is actually pretty, pretty cool. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, you obviously have specialties within this, but, but to think like that is where these crazy gains and things come through. Uh, a lot of, I mean, when you're, a, when you're a professional footballer, soccer player, you end up with people who have been stuck in the sport forever. And no, I'm not saying that anybody is, is bad. I'm not, to, it's just, you know, an outside look, a, per, a different perspective, someone who's incorporating something new. Yeah, it helps, man. It mm -hmm. helps. It helps in all endeavors in life, you know, and just that fresh look at like, oh, he, these mechanics are similar, right? right? These Muay Thai guys are slamming their legs into things with tons of power. Like mm -hmm. they can kick probably really hard, mm -hmm. really, you know, and, and fast and all those things, they, they make sense. So that's actually cool. I mean, we've already got tons of stuff to, to pull within here. The biggest thing for and I don't know if it is termed exit velocity, but I think that would be a good a good description of it. Um, you, if you look at it, I think that's the simple lens. It's like, what are the joints? What are the muscles? What are the speeds? So how fast do you have to decelerate on one side? And then what? how much does that get lengthened? And if you look like at some of the best field goal kickers of all time, so actually this is a good story. Uh, Robbie Gold was my college like athlete advisor okay so Robbie Gold kicked in the NFL for the last like 20 years he kicked for the 49ers kicked for the Bears and he would always say he's like like if if you can be really mobile and really strong and you practice that action of kicking you're going to be good as long as you have the <sighs> the the wherewithal and the coordination aspect there's some people that just lack the they lack coordination and space. And then there's not, there's not much we can do for you. Um, yeah. but, but if you have stability and, and mobility is part of stability and you have strength in that long position, that think about a rubber band getting stretched. And that's what I think about with a golf, a golf backswing, uh, an ice hockey backswing, uh, a baseball counter movement. And that's, it's not dissimilar. It's, it's, it's the same principles of, of, soccer of soccer so i think that's how you've got to look through that lens one thing i want to uh touch on or i'll say this just to 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 respond to that story i, I mentioned that back in the day uh the amount of yoga flexibility work that i would do pales in comparison to what i do now and one of the other things i noticed in doing that was i could jump higher and i could run faster due to becoming more flexible it's a bit like feeling like jelly, but not losing your strength. I, and I know like, you know, guys being guys, they don't want to do, I want to stretch and I want to do it. I want to lift. Like there's all that, but like I, for sure. Uh, and I, I'm not sure about how much it helped me get stronger, but I'm, I only speak for, for what I'm sure of is that I could jump higher and that I was faster because of what felt like a loosening of something that was too, that wasn't tight enough. That wasn't giving me the ability to extend probably like you're saying and really to, 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 to reach it just, it just changed like it. And it almost changed overnight. Right. And with such a minimal amount of effort. Uh, and so one of the last couple of things I want to touch at least is you mentioned joints, which guys also aren't going to talk about. I know you mentioned it in the video there as well on soccer. Like what do I need to be concerned about with joints? Uh, this, I mean, we talked about the ankle, you know, but is there other than knee hip, what, what exactly? So I, I always think if, if I'm, if I'm, laying things out i i go through i'm trying to like visualize the best way for me to explain this where it's like okay if i have um 
you're, especially at soccer, okay, the ankle joint can go in crazy, crazy directions when you have to cut and and plant and come across someone this way. Um, it's 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 like watching a basketball game. So you've got to be mobile through super super dorsiflexion through crazy eversion and inversion. You got to be able to be mobile through that whole area, and that's where it's like somebody might say, "Well, oh, isolation movements are stupid." Really? Because if I can do something like the tib raise or do traditional calf raises or do uh, there's a paper that just came out. So here's an interesting one. There's a paper that just came out. How can you grow your calves uh, the best? And if you have and it basically came down to can you actually grow your calves? Because a lot of people say, oh, you can't get bigger calves. Not that you need to get bigger calves to be the best soccer player, but you need to get stronger calves. And if I can do uh, knees bent. Uh, and heel raises, that's going to train my soleus the best. And if I can do standing calf raises, that's going to train my gastroc the best. Well, we know the soleus is plays a huge role in speed and in deceleration. And the gastroc's more of like the power, the power muscle for the calf. Okay, so if I can do those, are, those are two things I would train that are isolation based along with the tib, which would now be the anterior part of your calf. Now we're strong pretty much in three key muscles for the ankle joint through various ranges of motion. So if we, and that's the one thing I think people forget about with bodybuilding. Bodybuilders are stupid mobile. Like they, these guys are, are very, very flexible. Now they just, they look absurd because they're, <laughs> they're yeah. way, you know, for a sport like soccer or I mean most sports, right. they're just right. way too big. But if we just learn the principles and and take it from bodybuilding, what can we learn? Structural bodybuilding around that ankle joint is going to help improve that the stability of that ankle. So now it can produce more force if you're more stable on it. Uh, you can handle weird scenarios where you might roll on somebody's foot if you jump up and you land in a b bad position. It can react quicker. Um, also, that's where training things like a unilateral jump, like let's say you have mini hurdles set up and you're doing unilateral plyometrics over that. Now we're training it. We're training strength aspect. We're training range of motion and we're tra training the elasticity of it. So now your ankle in in uh, force production, they'll call it stiffness. But it's like a it's a bad way to term it because people think like stiff as in like uh, loss of motion, but think like elasticity. Um, so now that's going to be the way that we have to train the knee joint. Okay. So if we look at the knee joint, we need to train the strength of it. We need to train the, uh, co-contraction. So the hamstrings and the quads firing together, that's where things like plyometrics come into play. Um, we need to train the mobility of lengthening our hamstrings, lengthening our quads. If we can lengthen our quads, you know, using that couch stretch, well, now we have greater range of motion on that backswing. And then we're looking at the hip. Um, it, it's like... Looking at the speed, looking at the joint angle, and or looking at the speed, looking at the the depth of the the movement of that angle, is going to help you train a little bit more sports specific, which will lead to better performance. I don't know if I feel like I might not have answered your question entirely though, because I was yeah no 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 no, but see, but that's the thing I actually don't care because I can tell the amount of things that I'm actually <laughs> learning are going to have to go back to to do matter. And uh, so, yeah, you did, because obviously it was just about joints. But the, the last thing, and I know you, you, you got to get out of here, but the flexibility, uh, mobility things, there's a million different things we can do, right? I mentioned yoga, but it's not the only thing I do. I mean, there's, there's uh, foam rollers. You've got all sorts of, you know, from even massages, this, that, and the other. There's, there's tons of stuff you can do. What do you recommend if you have anything that you've seen helps people increase on the gains that they, that they have? Actually, you know, I this will be my shameless plug. We we actually sell uh, <laughs> uh, a pipe that we walk on. We walk on it barefoot, and then we'll do split squats on it barefoot. We'll do like holding a lunge. I call it a, a hinge hinge lunge where we have like a a pipe. So if you could go to garagetrank.com and you could pick up our 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 pipe, but you you walk on it and you get really. It's really good for a warm up. It's good for strengthening your your. Uh, your ankle joint and strengthening your and improving your your awareness, your neurological awareness. So like that's like one thing for the ankle joint that I think is absolutely fantastic. A lot of fighters, a lot of our throwers benefit from from that type of work for the ankle. I think another thing is just like, look, what we talked about. It's 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 15 minutes in the morning, 
don't pick up your phone. Go through, <laughs> let's say you do hip 90-90, couch stretch, pigeon pose, and uh, I, like uh, another one of your choice, another another maybe you've got a problem area in your upper back, so you got to roll out your upper back or something, whatever. You pick four exercises that you go through two times in the morning. If you want to be a world-class athlete, elite-level athlete, and then you do that again at night for 15 minutes, and you will not convince me, anyone, including the highest-performing people on the planet, Elon Musk could get 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes at night, right? Like, Anybody so can true. do that. You just got to put your freaking phone down. And it's hard. It's hard for me to do it because I like to go on Instagram or go on YouTube and watch YouTube videos. So it's like you do that oh, five yeah. days a week, once in the morning, once at night. And like what we do here and one of the best parts about having a good group and a good culture in your gym or with your teams is like, yo, let's do this before we train. Then after we train, we get a lift done. After we train, maybe you go in the sauna or something. And then let's go 15 minutes. We can bullshit and we can go through these these positions again together. And now you got that done. And now it's like you can do it before and after training. And I think like if you, you pick four movements and you do four movements on day one, you do another four movements on day two, and then you go back to your day one movements on day three, and you sort of just cycle back and forth. Now you're hitting anywhere from four to 12 exercises throughout the week, and that's going to improve a lot of the different positions. And then you're going to start to, and I think this is the best thing about yoga is that when you're holding positions and you got to get deeper or whatever, you, you'll you start to notice little things that you're like, oh, wow, that's weird. That that was tight or that, oh, wow, that loosened up. And then that's a heightened sense of awareness of your own body's feedback. Now, and I know this sounds weird, but I think the best athletes in the world, they have their brain here and they have their body here and their body does things Auto, like autonomously, like it, they are so well skilled that they don't have to think. They don't have to think about these things. Look at okay. So if we look at the, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about Ronaldo super jump because I mentioned that earlier, right? He comes through. He jumps off of one foot, and I've seen a lot of footage of him jumping off of two feet. And he doesn't think like I have to jump off of one foot or I have to jump off of right. two feet. His body is just doing what it needs to do. Now there's feedback over here from his brain to educate his body on the on the environment. But he's so he he reacts autonomously because of what he's done, you know, outside of, you know, what he's done on the on the pitch over and over and over and over again. And that's where like the thousands and thousands and thousands of hours happen and that builds that uh that that reaction with minimal thought process, which helps you react faster. And I think that that would be, that's my long-term answer is like, uh, you, you, you should just schedule yourself so that you have to do mobility in a group setting. Cause that's also going to help you be more accountable. And then you guys can work through and, and you'll probably see like the team even says like, man, I'm, I'm noticing I have a little bit more mobility on my hip on the backswing. Or when you even get hurt, you'll you'll also notice like, okay, I banged up my ankle. I rolled my ankle. Well, I can do these like uh, two or three specific stretches. Or if I do the, you know, going back to the bent knee uh, soleus calf raise, I can do this exercise to help improve that because I can get a little bit more blood flow to the ankle. So I think that it's really just coming down to structure and, and just doing the work, you know, just like your language it's stuff. It's so true. It's, yeah, exactly. It's exactly Dude, like and and the, the, the last two things that I wanted to say on that is number one, with what you're talking about with your brain being here and your body being over here. I've told this story on many a, a, a podcast, I think, but the best goal that I scored one season where I was leading goal scorer for my club, I was playing Azerbaijan, a ball came to me way over the head. And while I was there and the ball was traveling to me, I was having a discussion with myself. Yeah, Obviously, I didn't know this at the time, yeah. but like it just... Happen. I'm like, should I, should I, should I hit it? Nah, that, that's, nah, don't be, no, nah, you should, you should chest it. Like, all right, all right, I'll chest it. I chest it. I decided to chest it because I was like, there, I was in between guys. I decided to chest it. I chested it. And I've told this, my dad, like, he doesn't believe me. Like, I, I got tell chills him, so right like, now. Listen I chested the, story. the ball. Dude, dude, <laughs> I chest the ball. My leg kicks over another player. I did not consciously tell my leg to do it. Right. It just did it. Right. And then I, the ball came back down and then I finish it and the goalie crushes me and then we're off in celebration. We win one zero. Right. <laughs> but I have 
no, like I couldn't replicate it. I couldn't do it. I, you know, I, I won a bunch of, I won actually one of those, you know, those big fat uh, checks they give to a prize. It won this goal of the goal of the month. No way. And all these, it was crazy. That's cool. Yeah, it's crazy. It's just a kind, kind of a crazy story. But, and then the last thing I'll say is with the phone, because yeah, dude, I, I, almost every single podcast I have with these high people that work with high learners, high, uh, you know, performance athletes, businessmen, all this stuff. They say the same thing. It's you structure this in, you get it done, leave your phone alone. I know it's hard. Everyone says the same thing. We all kind of know that this thing is, it's good, but like if it controls you, it's good, but it's bad. Game over. You won't beat. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And so, yeah, I just wanted to say just for everybody who's like all the regular listeners to this already know, like how many times are you going to hear this before you do something and change? But uh, one of the things that in what the best athletes in the world, they always will say like, you know, Okay, when you for American football, when you when you get to the collegiate level, it happens faster. But the best athletes can slow it down mentally. And it the game speed's not changing, their reactions are changing, and it's happening faster for them relative to their opponent, which is makes makes them better. When they go to the NFL, it's the same thing. The game's even faster. Like for soccer, when you guys get to the top level, the game is happening faster, but the best athletes in the world have a slow brain, meaning not that they're meaning that they can process more things at higher speeds and it makes it easier for them to make sound discussions or sound sound decisions. And and it's like uh the best quarterbacks in the NFL will have a pre-snap read and they read, you know, nine guys and they can bring in all that information. The worst ones can only read two or three. And so it's like, it's the same principles across all sports. And if you can uh, break down movements, and this is where there's a concept called chunking, and you can you can take exercises or take scenarios in, in soccer, right? And you do specific drills and you just master this drill here. I'm gonna master this drill here. And then I'm gonna master this drill here on this side. And then I can have a drill that links those two together and I'm going to do each of them 500 times. Well, guess what? Now that just made your game that much stronger because you in that situation can slow things down. Whereas the other guy's having an anxiety attack because he can't slow it down. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's, that's also, it. that is the big difference. That's also yeah. probably what you saw with, with like yoga, I think is the other aspect is that, you know, I'll try and get our, our guys and, and women to, to get in the sauna and and to do yoga because it helps them visualize and they're, the the mirror neurons and the visualization is is a very very powerful thing that we're only on the ice we're only tipping the iceberg of this stuff this is this is there's there's research and stuff that that visualization it's not going to solve like a, a dead joint problem but it, it helps people feel joints that aren't that aren't even there. Right. And then that helps them when they be when they become when they get a prosthetic limb. So what's crazy is that what does that mean for sports performance? That means that if we're using visualization regularly, along with the mobility, along with the actions that we're doing in the gym, along with all the skilled work, and then it comes down to the coaches of just being like, this is how much time we need to do this, 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 and this. Okay, let's go and then improve the, on that schedule on a regular basis. Yeah, the fact that you even touched on visualization like blows my mind because that would be a whole that's a whole nother podcast all yeah, yeah. even in we got to just one. touched the uh, honestly yeah. because I took in one of the latest videos that we just did I interviewed these the top performers EPL guys World Cup guys winning championships all this stuff and I went through the commonalities and I think I'd done like thirty you know close and roughly it's just like the last two years but I've spoken to over a, a hundred of them the they all go back to the mind they all go back to this visualize they have some sort of thing, whether they either learned it, some of them learned it, some of them stumbled onto it, some of them figure it out that they start training it, and someone just but did they it. all have it. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and the fact that, you know, it is the tip of the iceberg, like you said, okay, maybe it's not going to bring your missing leg back, but it's going to do some shit that's pretty miraculous if you make it consistent. Like, you'll never believe that you could do some stuff. And that is a fact, right? So, yep. Listen, man, uh, not enough time at all. Yeah, this is so fun. To, I'm so I'm so it. happy I did this. <laughs> I, this is great. <laughs> good, good, man. Yeah, listen. So we'll we'll link to everything. Obviously, you, you guys have tons of stuff. Uh, you know, from your website to to the YouTube channel to all the stuff that you guys are doing. Is there any place else more specific you want to link anyone to? Uh, just go to garagetrank.com, and then we've 
we've got an app, Peak Strength. Uh, so you can go to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, Apple iOS Store, and we've got programs in there. And then when you when you go in, it's it's like uh, you know, you would click on soccer. Or, um, it is labeled soccer, so you would click on soccer, and then there's a program based off of what equipment you have, what you know, how many days a week are you training, what's your level. You input all this data, and then we will give you a, a program specific to whatever your needs are, essentially, essentially based off of uh, how we've educated it. So uh, that's a place that you can you can pick up one of our workouts. Awesome. Guys, we'll link to everything. If you're listening to this, it's in the show notes. If you're watching on YouTube, it's in the, de- in the description box. And uh, Dane, appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'll see you. All right. See you guys.